Hello and welcome to my channel. If it's your first time, my name is Bryn and if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. I love having you and thank you so much for your support as always. <sighs> I'm going to be sharing some photos of my past and my natural hair journey from the beginning. We're going back to the year that I was born. I'm going to take you through my childhood to high school where things got really ugly to university and then to the start of when I started going natural. I really, really hurt my hair and it's just hard to look at it's just not cute i've come a long way so there's gonna be like a little bit of ptsd there's gonna be a little bit of embarrassment I'm sharing photos from a time when i was very low on my self-esteem i was very insecure and <sighs> so let's get started <sighs> I'm a little bit biased, but I think I was a really cute baby. I had like a full head of hair, it was dark, my grandma always says that my hair reminded her of like the finger waves that flappers had because you could just tell when I was born and when I was in my infancy that I was gonna have curly hair. Obviously I'm biracial, so my dad has very kinky hair, like a type three type four and my mom has like wavy hair it's not like super straight at all it's more wavy so i definitely got like a perfect mix of my parents hair i actually remember when this picture was taken i think i was about three years old and the reason that my eyes are like that is because i was staring at my dad out of the corner of my eye because i was afraid that he was gonna leave the room and leave me with a photographer my hair Definitely you're starting to see more texture come into the room, come onto my head. Still, I'm like three years old, my hair was still very soft and it kind of lost that ringlet look, but I think that that's because back when I was a kid, there were just no curly hair products like the way that there is now. I remember going to the store and going to the pharmacy or the drugstore for instance, and there'd be like a line of hair products as there is now. And then this teeny little section was for black hair products and correct me if I'm wrong but a lot of those products back in the 90s were for straight perming your hair. It was like that product, I'm gonna post it, I don't remember the name of it right now but I'm gonna find it on the internet, that you put on your baby's head to like perm it to get the kink out of the hair. I don't remember seeing products about loving your natural hair about loving your natural curls. I have to give my mom credit because she knew that she needed to comb my hair while it was wet, not while it was dry so that it would get more frizzy. She would always comb my hair after the shower with a wide tooth comb, with a detangler, and with lots of conditioner, and then put my hair in two little braids. And that was how she did my hair. And I gotta say, like, she kinda had a handle on what was going on. She did the best with what she had, so. Love you, mom. But you need to explain to me why you did my hair like this. I don't know what this is. It's like, are those bangs? It's honestly like some type of curly mullet. I don't even have words. And I'm so glad that I don't even remember this stage in my life. Let's move past that. I actually really rate this look. I still wear my hair half up, half down all the time. I bet you I learned this from my mom, I don't even know. But she would like slick my hair back with water and she'd always try to put like cute barrettes and cute little pigtails and braids in my hair. I still remember though that every time I had to get my hair done, I would cry. I would bawl my eyes out. And I think that's where like my disdain for my hair kind of grew from where it grew from because it was just so naughty all the time it hurt so much to get my hair combed like i said my mom always did my hair while it was wet so she would spray my hair with water in the morning and i would cry my eyes out and she'd style it and put in a cute little updo and i just always hated that part of my day 
then I thought that I was all grown around like 9 or 10 going into middle school so I stopped going to my mom for my hair and just took on the role of hairdresser for myself and it was not good and it just progressed into like terrible I would do the same thing every single day I would just take my hair and slick it back into like a low ponytail or a low bun I never let my hair out I never did any hairstyles like I just did not know how to manage it I didn't have the right products I wanted straight hair so badly so badly because it just looked so easy so silky and it was around this time that my cousin actually started straightening my hair I would go to her house like every couple months and we would have a sleepover so she would always straighten my hair and she had like a chi ceramic straightener and we just thought that was the most amazing thing ever and we would sit in front of her TV watching DVDs of that 70s show and she would straighten my hair and it would take a few hours <sighs> When she was done, I just thought I was like the most beautiful girl I felt so good about myself with like my long silky Soft straight hair and looking at the media back then there were very few women of color who rock natural hair I begged 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 for my own hair straightener and I finally got one I think I was like in grade eight or nine in grade nine I went to an all-girls school and I didn't really straighten my hair that much I actually did not care about what I looked like we just had fun it was just the girls and I had braces and I was awkward and I was skinny and then the nuns that owned the high school that I went to the all-girls school that I went to in grade nine they sold the school to a private school and my parents were not gonna pay twenty thousand dollars a year for me to go there so I ended up going to a co-ed school and like if I could only talk to myself back when I was a little girl a young woman I should say I was so insecure I had braces I thought it was ugly I I really did not feel good about myself it was a Catholic school so it was predominantly white and I just aspired to blend in, to have straight hair. I also got my first job. I was at a grocery store with a lot of cute boys. So I was just super insecure and I was just obsessed with straightening my hair. In the beginning, I don't think I used heat protectant. I even remember straightening my hair from wet once and like my hair just frying. My grade 11 school pick. Oh my god, no, those bangs, oh, my hair was so dead, like, I used to have such long, gorgeous hair, and it just became like this long, and dead, and fried, and I got these bangs, and I box dyed it black, oh, oh my god, oh my god, okay, so this is when Jersey Shore was huge, so you had to like volumize the top of your hair, you had to have bangs, I wanted Snooki's hair. <laughs> we need to talk about the eyebrows. What are those? Oh my god. Mm, not only did I straighten my hair, but I also like waxed off my entire eyebrow. That was like the look. That was the look. I remember coming home from school one day and sitting on my couch and watching TV and I was just like running my hand through my hair and it was breaking like ends like this long were just breaking off my hair and I kept running my hands through like all different sections of my hair and I kid you not there was a pile of dead hair on my lap that was when I realized that I was not doing good I bought extensions, I bought clip-ins, I think they were like 20 inch extensions. Oh my god, I was wilding in grade 12, I really was. It just, like, and the extensions were obviously straight, so I had to straighten my hair. And at least my hair looked less dead because I had clip-ins, but it was just flat, it was box dyed black. Why? I have dark hair. I didn't need to go around box dyeing my hair black. Nobody could tell me what to do. And that's another thing. My family 
hated that I was straightening my hair. My dad would be like, why are you straightening your hair? My mom was like, why? My grandparents, everyone would always drive me crazy telling me that I had beautiful hair, that I didn't need to straighten it, but I was addicted and I didn't believe them. <laughs> I graduated high school, thank God. And I started getting into wobbling a little bit. Like, what is this photo? Shout out to Ilkaz, I mean, they're a great brand, no disrespect, but my hair, I have like this much dead hair. It was so flat. And like, if you look around my baby hairs, like around my roots, I like have a receding hairline because my hair was just so dead that it was just breaking off. Like the new growth was just like, nope, not today. When I curled my extensions, like, I couldn't just let my hair be curly. There's like, there's like a disconnect in the brain during this period of my life. <laughs> 2013 was a good year. I did the Miss Black Beauty Canada beauty pageant and I met a lot of wonderful ladies. Especially I met this one girl in the pageant who was natural and this is like going back seven years ago. So this is when, I could be wrong, but like, I think this is when YouTube and like the natural hair movement really started to grow and to find its roots. But I was like becoming aware of like, oh, you can use this thing called leave-in conditioner and like, oh, like there's now these products, like there's this product called Mixed Chicks that I can use for my hair. And that hair was flat and that hair needed to be cut and that hair had no curl to it. It was just dead. I could not accept myself as I was with curly hair. And that was also because by this point my hair was so fried. <laughs> okay, I love this photo so much because it reminds me of that Chrissy Teigen pic. Like, I had just won first runner up. I remember touching my hair, like my baby hair, and it was like steel wool. It was so dry and damaged. You can tell. 2014, I actually started to experiment with wearing my hair natural in 2014. I think like my family brainwashing me that I had beautiful curly hair and that I should stop straightening my hair was getting to me. Finally, they were making an impact on my very thick skull. And I think I was starting to watch YouTubers and to see women with curly hair and I just fell in love and I was like, oh my God, my hair could look like that somehow. But like, Look, the entire underside of my hair in this photo is fried and then I maybe have like four or five waves kind of curls and the top is so flat and I think I was still box dyeing my hair black at this point. A big part of transitioning your hair is just accepting what it looks like. My hair was very dead and very damaged but the more that I straightened it, the more that my hair would become damaged. So I knew that I just had to stop straightening it at this point and just accept how it looked. And even though it was difficult in the beginning and I just still held that internalized belief that it looked better when it was straight, I really applaud myself for taking that plunge and starting to go natural at this point. No matter what your hair looks like, if you are going to start a natural hair journey, you have to stop straightening it, stop blow drying it, etc. You just have to accept it. Oh, I actually like this photo. It just reminds me of being like so young and fresh and like full of life and happiness. I got... what? It's not balayage, ombre, that's what it was called. I got a blonde ombre and it made my hair feel like hay. 2015, I competed in Miss Universe Canada and I placed third runner up. And this was a really good year for my hair. I had a hair sponsor, Michael's Hair Body and Mind, and they really helped me with bringing health back into my hair. And this year I also stopped straightening my hair and switched over to blow drying. Look at my hair. When I was competing and they were sponsoring me, I was going in for weekly conditioning and weekly blow dries and they colored my hair and they just made it so beautiful. This was the year that curling wands were really popular and I got one and instead of just embracing my natural curls, 
I transitioned to frying my hair with a curling wand over and over again and I have curly hair so why did I need to curl my hair with a curling wand? I remember even my mom calling me out and being like, why? One plus one equals like, what? You have curly hair, why are you using a curly wand? I don't know, I don't have an answer for you. But I did that and I regret it. Sorry. I'm cringing at the amount of dead hair. Uh-uh. This is like the beginning of my curly hair journey. I finally went to see a curly hair specialist. There's this website here in Toronto called Blog TO and they did a list of curly hair dressers. And so I went to the number one curly hair dresser on that list and she chopped off so much of my hair because I had one goal and that goal was length and I knew that straightening my hair and curl wanding my hair and blow drying my hair was not gonna help me achieve that length that I wanted. See the curl finally starts to come back in my hair. There's finally like a little bit of volume, finally. It's like very frustrating going natural. I, trust me, I know. Some days the curls look bomb and then you do the exact same thing the next day and your hair looks frizzy or it's humid out. And it's like a struggle and you just want to throw your hair up in a bun and girl do that if you're gonna throw your hair in a bun then at least you're not putting heat on it I started going natural on a regular basis like where I was just not putting any heat on my hair whatsoever and using a lot of deep conditioner like I would deep condition my hair all the time and I would use a lot of leave-in conditioners and a lot of products that were free from parabens and sulfates and any harsh chemicals that dry out your hair like alcohols and I just became addicted to trying new products and seeing what worked out for my hair I would try gels and mousses and diva curl but they're cancelled but my hair it grew a lot from that big chop but there was still so much dead hair that had to be cut again from just years of still being exposed to heat previously the hair that was up here grew out to down here so i had to get another big chop i cut off like another five inches in 2019 and you can finally see that the hair is just healthy and the curl is so defined the texture is so soft since this particular big chop I've probably straightened my hair maybe once blow dried it maybe like three times and I've gotten one cut since then of about an inch and a half that's how long my hair is now thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed I hope you did not screenshot any of my photos please I just want to burn them all especially those high school photos Lord have mercy if you have any questions, comments, or any video suggestions, let me know. And I look forward to seeing you guys again. Bye!